time for Research in Manoa. Welcome to the program. I'm Linda Martell, and I'm happy today to be co-hosting the next half hour with Jeff Taylor. And we're both from the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. We call that HIGP. It's in the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology at UH Manoa. So uh, our topic today is all about the sun and solar eclipses. And we're so pleased to have with us Natalie Alzate. And she's um, a visiting scientist at IFA, but I'm going to let her uh, um, pronounce the name of the university in Wales where she's affiliated. So welcome, Natalie. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for having me. So your affiliation is? Aberystwyth University. It's in Wales in the UK. And are you originally from the UK? Your voice is not having an accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was raised in the US. I'm originally from Colombia, but uh, yeah, my accent is American. <laughs> yes. So you're a visiting scientist at IFA. Um, and what group and who are you working with over here? So I am working with Dr. Sharia Habal. She is a professor at the Institute for Astronomy. and. Um, I've been working with her for two years now. So what she does is she studies um, she studies this, the sun's atmosphere or the corona, uh, but specifically she chases total, total solar eclipses um, and uh, studies the corona that way because that is when the corona is visible. So um, so that's what I do with her. Yeah. So we know on the mainland, uh, people are getting very excited about the August twenty first uh, total solar eclipse. Correct. But as we were talking with Jeff earlier, you don't have to wait until the shadow of the moon passes you to um, understand about the sun and the corona. Right. So you study it all year. Yes, yes. Um, so I got into solar physics about four years ago now when I started my PhD. And uh, um, for whatever the reasons, I ended up going to the UK to uh, uh, get my PhD. And so my my supervisor there, Dr. Hugh Morgan, he, he was Shadia's uh, supervisor when he was a PhD student. Mm -hmm. So that's where the connection is, mm -hmm. and that's how I met Shadia. Um, so yes, yeah, so what we do is we study, <coughs> we study the, um, the corona um, using mostly space-based um, instruments. Hmm. Um, okay, So we have, um, for example, um, the LASCO telescope, which is a, a coronagraph. Um, imager and so what it does is it simulates uh, a total solar eclipse so because it has an occulter that basically serves as the moon in space you have something physically that blocks that blocks out. it the okay. problem with that is is that um, it you have to make the disk wide enough so that you can actually see the corona because the surface of the Sun is so bright um, so because of this you're you're losing um, a certain field of view from the surface of the sun yeah. uh, up to the edge of the occulter. So that's why a total solar eclipse is so unique because you have the moon that is, um, you know, a perfect fit, if you will. It it's, uh, appears to be the same size as the solar disk. So you're able to see what's going on from the surface of the sun out to several solar radii. Oh, that's interesting. Where, where will you be August 21st? Um, so the whole team, um, I should mention, uh, could we put the first image up, please? I should mention that, that the team, we are called the Solar Wind Sherpas. We are, <laughs> <laughs> we are a group of international scientists. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we chase eclipses. And sometimes we have to go to very remote places. In this case, we went to Svalbard, which is in the Arctic Circle. So you can imagine the conditions that we had to deal with, not just in us staying warm, but also, you know, having to deal with any effects that the cold had on the equipment. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so so we go to to several different different places. In this case, it's in our backyard. It's in the U.S. It'll be on August 21st of this year. And so um, what the group is doing is we are splitting into uh, five different groups. Oh. Okay, so we're going to have five oh. observation sites um, from Oregon all the way to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be in Oregon, we will be in Idaho, uh, two sites in Wyoming, and uh, one site in Nebraska. Uh, so m me specifically, I will be in Guernsey, Wyoming. <laughs> yes. Is that be foreign country? 
Huh? Guernsey, Wyoming. Guernsey, Wyoming, yes, <laughs> yes. Ranching. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'll be leading a team there. Um, so yeah. I think we have another image of the of the amount of equipment that you yes, lug please. all over the world. Okay, so this is <laughs> this was uh, the eclipse in Indonesia last year. So I've only been to two eclipses, the one in Svalbard and then this one in Indonesia, which was last year. Um, so here you see those um, those cases, you see the suitcases, mm -hmm. um, and you s and there's a lot more to that picture that <laughs> did not make it into the picture. Um, so what we're doing here is um, we were, we were uh, gathering all our, our equipment and to put on those speedboats. You see the, the blue uh, top there, that's a speedboat because we were going to, um, to uh, a remote island um, to observe. So uh, we usually have maybe just over a ton of equipment. <laughs> so, you know, we're, ta we're talking about... You, you need know, Sherpas. We are Sherpas <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> That's um, wow. Yes, so, so we have the telescopes, we have the mounts, we have the tripods, and we have computers that control the telescopes, um, things like that. So it, it all adds up. And so a lot of the things were, you know, you know we have to carry, and the f carry them and the fact that we have to c carry them sometimes to remote places. That's, mm -hmm. that's why the name fits. Um, and so, you know, the more people we get in the group, the better so we can <laughs> transport all this. <laughs> Is the are you going to take the thousand pounds to each of the sites, <laughs> or is it you're going to divide some of it? And well, I mean, does each site have the whole set of gears? Or so right uh, now we are actually in the process of packing things and weighing things. So this this expedition is going to be a bit uh, challenging, even though it's. You know, it's not in a remote location, but the fact that we have five different sites, we're adding yeah. more equipment, and we have identical equipment at each site. Um, so we'll see how much weight uh, we come yeah. up with <laughs> in the next day or so, wow. and then we, we'll ship it to the mainland. Um, the bulkier stuff, mm -hmm. we will ship. Gives a new view on astronomy. You think of it as it's set telescopes, which exactly. are not portable. Exactly. <laughs> except for and maybe space telescopes that are there but here's this real true exploration um, it is taking you take an expedition to go to these five sites and, and the same with indonesia and the arctic exactly yeah. exactly and and i think that's something that's um that people don't realize i mean as an astronomer mm -hmm. you know you you um sort of book time on a telescope you go you do your thing computer operated or whatnot unless of course you're in amateur or, or doing yeah. backyard astronomy mm -hmm. but yes in this case it's you know it's custom built telescopes and and you know we we um we carry them if you can put up the next image i can show you one of the equipments um yeah so here we have our leader shadia habal in the foreground and then the guy standing he's my supervisor in in the uk so here you see some of the uh, custom made uh telescopes that we use um and these have filters um, on them that um that image uh, specific elements in the in the sun's atmosphere. Um, so so yes, we have to carry all of this, and mm -hmm. they're operated um, with computers. So that's adding weight. Tents. Uh, we set up tents to house the equipment. I would guess sometimes the weather is not perfect. It's not perfect. Um, like I said, I've only been to two eclipses, but one was good, one was bad weather-wise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and it happens. I mean, it's it's the it's, it's the it reality of the game, really. When it was bad, the, bad enough so you didn't really get any data from it. But when a solar eclipse happens, the, say it's raining, yeah, it still gets dark, and all. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is. You get some sense of you it. You get some sense of it. So so the South Bard eclipse was magnificent. It was it was nice and crisp, uh, clear skies and everything. Amazing data. Um, the one in Indonesia, uh, we were clouded out, mm. um, mm -hmm. but you know the clouds were, you know, they were moving, and there were those few minutes where we could still sort of experience it. So from a scientific point of view, bummer, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was still it was still beautiful to see in the sense that you, you still had an idea of what was going on, what these celestial objects were doing. Could you just describe what it must feel like to be? somewhere where it's daytime and then suddenly it's more like twilight or darker like that yeah so um you know knowing that 
it's going to get dark, you think, okay, yeah, this, yeah that makes sense. I, I, I know what <laughs> I know what it's going to look like, but it's really hard to for anyone to explain to you what it's like. For for me, the eclipse in Svalbard was it was just beautiful. I mean, uh, in uh, you know, the fact that it gets dark, the fact that it gets quiet, because w once the moon was covering. Um, the sun, everyone, everyone started cheering, but just as quickly, it was silent, mm. and you can just, you, you didn't have to look at people, you just felt how amazed they were. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and it's, so, it's very short-lived, but at the same time, it's, it's sort of like, those two minutes seem like mm. an eternity, because it's such a beautiful um, wow. spectacle, yes. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the science that you gather during the eclipses. And okay. So th talk about the, the filters or the sorts of things that you're putting on your telescope. Right, so um, so we sort of run two, two main experiments, I should say. Um, so uh, if you put up the next image, please, I'll show you before I get to the, to the filters, I'll, I'll show you. So here, this, is, this was the eclipse, uh, 2008 eclipse total solar eclipse over China. So this is an image in white lights. This is, this is essentially, um, you know, what we see when, when we look at the corona, when, it's, when the sun is eclipsed. Um, so this, so here, the, you know, this white light, what we're showing, uh, the, the different structures in, in the corona, you have, you have these, uh, these rays, these plumes, you have the, the streamers um, just moving away from the surface of the sun. So, so this is representing the free electrons that are that are moving um, away from the surface through magnetic field lines. So if you put up the next image, uh, in this image, it's the same eclipse, but this one was imaged using two different filters. And so each, um, each filter is observing a different element that we know exists in the corona. In this case, we have um, iron 11, uh, which is the red color that you see. And then the green color is um, iron 14. And so each color is representative of a different um, temperature in the corona. So for example, the iron 11, which is the red, uh, is about, the temperature is about a million uh, degrees. And um, the green, the iron 14, is about two million. What do the designators 11 and 14 refer to? So we're talking about different, different ions. So for example, we, um, iron, um, uh, 13 plus, so it, it is the iron 14, which means 13 electrons oh. have been have been um, broken oh, off okay. essentially oh. um, through an ionization process. So as as it gets heated up, um, so so because of that process, each each color, if you will, each element represents a different temperature. And so this this is very interesting to us because um, you know a long-standing mystery of the corona is why is it so hot. The, as you go further away from, from the surface, okay? Um, so so it, the hot corona was discovered, iron was discovered, um, but what we've done, what we've been able to discover is that um, uh, different structures in the corona have um, different temperatures within them. So, so, we, so you don't just see one, one temperature no. throughout, you, you sort of have a mm. mix. And that's why you see these, um, if you can put the image back up, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, for example, on on the top right, um, you have you have. Uh, can you can you tell there's there's a prominence sticking out? Mm, yeah. um, so that's the the red. So that's a cooler material, and then it's sort of enshrouded by this green. So it's this hotter material. Wow. Uh, yeah. So this is this is something that the team was able to show, or image rather, and then. Show. There are. It looks like it's all going to the side, but actually it goes around spherically so that some of it's coming right at Yeah, us. so it's radiating in, in, in all directions, but yeah, you know, can, what we see. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yes. Did Very you nice. take the, I might have missed this, but are you getting the information separately and putting that picture together overlaid, or are you yeah, gathering? So, yeah, okay. so there's, there is a bit of, of processing. So this is the telescopes that I showed. Um, if we go back to the third image, please. So here you see you see the different uh, uh, sort of telescopes. So each each telescope um, has a, a a different camera um, that images you know that has the filters that image and for each uh, element in this case iron 14 and iron 11. Mm. 
when um, you say telescope, the one shoddy is touching, is that a telescope with a camera? Yeah. 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 You don't need a very big telescope to do this you don't. particular observation. You mm -hmm. don't, but um, you know, it's when you start putting these together so we can take the different images and you and, and usually we have a white white light camera set up there as well. Um, so I think we're going to um, continue this conversation after a short uh, short break. Don't go away. <laughs> everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Research in Manoa. We're talking with Natalia Alzate about the solar eclipses. And we're going to show you again um, an image that um, the group of the, the solar Sherpas took of the, um, it's, number, it's, it's image number four that we saw earlier of um, the solar cor corona with the moon in front. Can we back up one image so we can see that shot of the moon? Um, I just want to mention that the U.S. Postal Service right now has a sheet of stamps that you can get, postage stamps, that look just like this. Um, but in that case, someone had taken a separate picture of the moon and overlaid it onto the, the image of the solar corona. But uh, it's also thermal, um, the, the, the ink that they used on the stamps. When you put your thumb on the stamp, uh, you can make the moon appear and disappear. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, I yes. really like that stamp. <laughs> um, this image is not a composite image. This is actually the moon blocking the sun from the Earth. So why are we seeing the moon? So that is um, Earth's light reflecting um, onto the moon, I believe. This is such an amazing picture. It, <laughs> is, a, it is an amazing picture. Earthshine. Earthshine, yeah. It would show, too, how at a full Earth on the Moon, even at the lunar night, you would be, it would be fairly bright on the surface compared to uh, what you would put a dark space at, on the Earth at night, you know, out in the desert away from any street lights or something like that. It'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, Earth, absolutely. Yeah, Earth, yeah. big Earth shine. <laughs> That's an ama amazing picture. <laughs> yeah, yes it is. <laughs> so we're just uh, sort of enthralled with this idea of people <laughs> in a group going to all over the world looking at solar eclipses. So how many groups are there out there who do this? Actually we are the only group that does the science that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean there, there are several groups that do go out and observe the eclipse obviously and they do what they do but the type of science that we do and the things that we have found out um, during eclipses we are the only group and uh, each eclipse um, has yielded a new result that we haven't had before. So that sort of that, wow. that sort of sparks our addiction to keep chasing yeah. these mm -hmm. events. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not just the same thing every time. Exactly, you're you don't just see the corona. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yes, but we are able to extract science from every um, every uh, observation. You must have gigabytes of data. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have it, so <laughs> so I'll have to check on that. But but yes, um, so our um, one of our team members, uh, uh, Milos Druckmiller, um, he's um, he's um, he he processes the the eclipse images, these these gorgeous, or spectacular mm -hmm. white light images mm -hmm. uh, specifically. And so he has a website where he has all of them. So oh, that's great. <laughs> so at the very least, they are publicly available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. when, the, when the eclipse happens, 
the equipment, these telescopes with the cameras, is fully automated, so you don't have to worry about it and can enjoy the eclipse? Yes. Or do you have um, to do some monitoring? And I mean, you, you want to monitor, but, but basically the, the software is set up to, to run the cameras, and that is precisely what we did in Svalbard. Um, we just sort of uh, we let them run, and we went out and enjoyed. And, and you don't want to be, you know, anywhere near where you might <laughs> move anything with Moving, the excitement. Yeah, exci yeah. Exci wow. yeah, so you really need uh, to be away from it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh. Depending on the instrument, but yes, for the telescopes, they are. You run them through. The I know that there's also a citizen science program going on, and I should have looked up the e uh, the website. But so that the people across the path of totality can email in like images that they see that the, you know just for probably not in these different wavelengths like right no 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 but to no, get an idea of what the eclipse looks like as it yeah so I I mean I'm not well versed in, in that project but I do believe they're trying to put together a, a sort of a mega movie of sorts mm. um, so I mean it's it's great to see to see the entire eclipse in a movie. Why not? Um, but one one thing that I will say, since since you brought that up, is that uh, you know if you're going to go out and see the, this eclipse, see the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see the eclipse. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you don't. You know, the the sun's corona is always there, but you don't always see it because the surface mm. is so bright. So this is uh, this is our only chance to really see it. I mean, it's uh, science aside, it's just a gorgeous thing to see. Don't take pictures. Just. You know, watch it. Watch it and enjoy it. And there are plenty of uh, references on NASA websites about the kind of glasses you should be wearing yes. um, until the, the moment of total uh, coverage. Yes, actually, and I'm glad you brought that up as well because um, s some people don't, don't realize, you know, um, that once the moon completely covers um, um, the sun, you can take off your glasses. Otherwise, you're not going to see anything, okay? Yeah. Um, but it is safe to see the corona. Um, and so, you know, use the glasses to see the different phases of the eclipse when you see, you see the moon moving over, over the, the surface of the sun, you know, because any little bit of sunlight is, is damaging. But once it is um, at totality, mm -hmm. you are safe to take them off and you can enjoy the the For beautiful that corona minute or so yeah. and then put your two glasses minutes. back on yeah, two and a half minutes yeah <laughs> yeah well there have been some that have been seven minutes so so it does oh, happen really? it does wow. happen interesting but but yes this one is a couple minutes depending on where you're at of course what about the next image you have oh yes um what is this image six yes um, so this was a, a result from the uh, 2015 eclipse over Svalbard and this um, paper was published by uh, Shadia Habal and Adi Ding um, just recently, actually. And so, um, so here what they did is, so Adi uh, Ding built a spectrometer. Um, and so what he did is he, he, he placed the, the slit of the spectrometer near the sort of the edge there the, um, from the surface, if you will, and then moved it outward as the eclipse went on. Um, so one thing that's interesting here, first off, those little rectangles, they each represent a certain uh, a speed um, of, of, of some of these structures that, that are moving. But the thing that was most interesting is that they found um, these parcels that have such a range uh, in velocity from, from just under 100 kilometers per second and up to 1,500. That's the velocity of ions that are moving out? Yeah, so, so some of this ionized material okay. as, as it's moving. And so um, the neat thing that they found is that um, these parcels have, um, have cool material. So it's not just um, a CME, uh, a hot material. Um, it, it's also em embedded or combined with, with some uh, uh, cool material. So the interpre interpretation of this was that the CME is made of the hot material, but cool material that perhaps triggered the CME moves with this CME and it's moving away from the observer and the way they know that is because of the red shift um, um, from, uh, from the, um, the, Doppler, the Doppler shift that they found while they measured using the spectrometer. And the CME again is the coronal mass ejection. Sorry, the mass coronal mass ejection. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, so the, the, the other thing to point out here is the fact that um, this parcel would be below the field of view of the coronagraph that I mentioned earlier you know, the one that simulates uh -huh. a total solar eclipse. Oh. So this would have been covered um, 
by that occulter, oh. so you wouldn't have seen this result. So it has to be an Earth-based uh, observation of an eclipse. Well, we have to be able to see the entire yeah. corona. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so this was a very These neat, are neat very result. very high speeds. Is a kilometer is hundreds to a thousand kilometers per second. Exactly. Which is what, hundreds of thousands of miles an hour or yeah. something. I, again, do that math, <laughs> quick it out. Well, well, let's see. We measure, we measure, uh, um, for example, CMEs, the, the ejections in kilometers per second. So we're, we're talking, you know, about four, 400 to 800 is the range for, for a CME. So, so we're talking about quite the range of, of speeds here. So it's not. Well, you have to be going 17,000 miles an hour to get into Earth orbit. That's what the orbital speed is. And that's only, it's like 11 kilometers per second or something like that. I forget. So wow. this, these are really fast. Yeah, these are. Absolutely. So yeah, it's very neat results. Um, so so uh, I think at four of the five sites, we're going to have a, s a similar instrument, a spectrometer, also built by Adi Ding, um, that will uh, yeah will carry out a similar uh, experiments. So we'll see what we find. We have an image of your um, the website that you're putting yes. together. Yes. Yes. Last image, please. So um, in previous eclipses, the last two, I, I put together a blog, you know, to just kind of keep people updated on, on what we're doing, especially because we were going to, to such, yeah. such yeah. Uh, interesting uh, places. Mm -hmm. um, so now what I've done, what Shadi asked me to do, is to, to put together a website for the group. So this is a permanent site, and so it houses information on the eclipse, um, information on the solar wind and Sherpas, our biographies, how it all started, um, and then uh, there's this, um, if you see on the menu, it says uh, science and news. So w w what I've put on there are the publications that have come out mm -hmm. of these so people can see that you know, it's beautiful, but it's also scientific. And then um, on their blog, so you can see the previous blogs. And I'll be updating the blog. I think I'll actually start blogging for this eclipse uh, in the next day or so. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I hope to be able to blog every single day. I've been able to do more more or less uh, uh, previously, so I should be able to for this one. When are, when are you going to leave to go to the mainland to, so to go to whichever, what site do, are you going to be at? I'll be in Guernsey, Wyoming, but what we're doing is we'll leave Hawaii um, on the 11th, and so we're going to Boulder, Boulder, Colorado, and um, from there, basically, we're all meeting there, and we, then we, a couple of days later, we're so, sort of split to our uh, different sites. Uh, thank you so much for coming and talking thank to you us for having all me. about the solar eclipses. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you. It was fun <laughs> yeah. being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.